Let's talk about why you should use a strong lead hand grip to create effortless shaft lean. Okay, Henry, so one of my preferences, as you know and the audience probably knows, I'm biased toward a slightly stronger grip. This is huge. This yeah. is really big, especially for those of you that follow us and are members of our website. Make sure you go back and watch the grip video because this is really, really key, I feel, for setting the stage for a lot of the dynamics we're trying to create. Now, is it imperative that a player has a strong grip? Obviously not. No. John it, Rahm and Colin Morikawa. Yeah, two of the best players in the world. They both have weaker grips. Yeah. What is the matchup that must, or that you see from everybody with a weak grip at impact? Well, they have a lot of flexion or bow of this lead yeah. hand. Is that a natural motion or is it pretty complicated? I don't feel like it is. I think to me, one, it's in my opinion, a vulnerable place to put your wrist. You don't see a lot of day-to-day -day activities or athletic things going on in this motion. Yeah. I mean, it's sort of like painting a paintbrush on a wall. Yeah. Members of our, our academy have seen some demonstrations, and if you've ever come and taken a lesson from me, I actually have people hit something. Yeah, let's show them. Like a basket. So I'll put a basket or something in front of somebody, and then I'll have them flip their club upside down, and I don't tell them how to hit the basket. I just say, hit the basket. Hit it hard. Yeah. And then after about five hits, I say, stop and look at how your hand is when it hits the, the basket. And so far, I've tested it on a few thousand people, not just like one or two, and zero people have ever hit it with a bowed lead wrist. Unless they were really taught that one from a young age, which goes to our point with Morikawa and Rom. They've likely been doing that since they started. But even those guys, if I gave them a stick and said, go hit a tree, mm -hmm. I guarantee you they wouldn't hit it like this. Yeah. Because their subconscious is smart enough to know how to protect it. So they have learned to match that up, square the face, but naturally that's it's kind of it's not a natural motion for most of us and it's also a vulnerable position as you as you said earlier so milo you're also a former baseball player so that grip also aligns with a baseball bat you don't see many baseball players gripping the bat like that do you, no, you, you i've never seen anybody ever hit the ball with a, a flex lead wrist with a bat yeah you don't do it everybody hits knuckles up there's actually a little bit of extension in the wrist at, at impact. Mm -hmm. So part of why you know, it's my preference, but it's also a lot easier for the average person to deliver good impact dynamics. So the r right amount of shaft lean, square face, out of that slightly stronger grip, generally. Yeah, and, we, and we've done a video on this before with the bowed left wrist and why, I don't know, I feel like there's a little bit of a fad with that, that look. And, you know, obviously you have great players that are employing that or have employed that. But again, sure. they've probably been doing it since they were very young. Yeah, a lot of them are still very young, but they're on tour. <laughs> <laughs> so why, why would the stronger left hand lend itself to creating shaffling more easily for people at home? Well, because all I have to do is use more of a hammering motion in my, in my lead wrist. And I can still deliver a square club face. I don't have to deliver it with this kind of a flexed look. So turn down, bow. A lot more supination in the forearm, a lot, a lot of flexion in the wrist. Yeah. That can be a lot more difficult to, to be able to time and match up. And you see a lot of the guys that have that weaker left hand that use it well. They also look to have a bit of a stronger right hand yeah. So why why would that maybe match up for them? Is that so they can kind of keep their right hand under their or right arm, right side under the left through impact? Well, I'd say it's the relationship between the the left and the right. So if the right hand is stronger than the left, when you hinge your your trail hand or, or trail hand stronger than the left than the lead, mm -hmm. when you hinge your trail hand, it automatically puts that that lead hand into flexion. So a guy like Morikawa, if you look at his grip. He's got a neutral to slightly strong trail hand yeah. and an extremely weak lead hand, like yeah. 
you don't yeah you, you probably can't even put your hand on I, like his i hand. don't think i can <laughs> <laughs> but that that's when he when he ex extends that trail wrist which yeah, we so often talk about that gets him that bowed look at the top yep and then he has to really feel like he is turning the knuckles on his lead hand down yeah like this as he goes through the golf ball so for those of you at home that maybe have tried in the past to get knuckles down back of the hand to the target glove logo to the target down to the ground any of that feel maybe you've had some struggles with that in the past i know i did <laughs> yeah it's, i've experimented with it yep. and it literally makes it so i can't hit the ball <laughs> <laughs> me too it gets kind of a cool look at the top no doubt oh yeah having a little bit of that bow I, mean, I can actually still hit it straight, but it takes my speed from, yeah. you know, I'm pretty fast, and then I go really slow. Yeah. Because I have to try so hard. And to me, there's a lot of speed in this. We know there's a lot of speed in this. So we, we've done videos with your, your sort of matchup, how you kind of have that almost butterfly look here mm -hmm. versus hands opposing. Yes. That's my preference. I found it's way easier to create good impact dynamics. And let's show them a little bit of why. So we've got a couple little... Yeah, so we got the hanger out here. So the hanger is a great training aid we've used in the past. You've probably seen a couple of our videos. I'll link them. I love the hanger, but if you look at how I've got it set up, you can see the leading edge is pointing up on my golf club, while this one is more on a diagonal, almost a 45 degree angle. What that does is it gets me set up where the hanger's rail is resting on my trail forearm at a dress. And then it, it gives me the opportunity when my wrists hinge, so when I put my trail wrist into extension and add a little bit of radial or like a hammering motion into my, my lead wrist, now it's resting on my lead forearm. Mm -hmm. But the face is still slightly towed down so I can deliver it with my rotation square with shaft lean. Mm -hmm. Where most people, when they set this up, they put it more vertical yeah match this this face to that one if i do that in order to hit it i just experimented with it off it's camera really, yeah. i had to throw the angles at it and hit it with the shaft pointing straight back at yeah. me i couldn't have any lean in the shaft otherwise that thing would be really digging into your forearm and this blocked me yeah so getting that aligned for those of you that do already have the hanger that's really important even if you have a more neutral weak grip we found that having that face a little more to the right is helpful yeah but in your case, with a stronger grip, you have this, what, a good 30 degrees right of that face, would you say? Something like that? Something like that. It's a lot. Yeah. So it looks like that, that face on the hanger is pointed Over way there. out to right field. Yep. But that's going to allow you to set the angles and get this helpful little alignment here up his left arm. So then he can turn and burn into impact. And I can just deliver this. Now look where that glove logo is pointing, just so you guys are clear. It's up on a 45, sort of out towards right field and a little bit up towards the sky. Is it it's, pointed the same direction as this face? Yeah, would you believe it? <laughs> <laughs> so it's not down at the target, it's not down to the ground for that strong grip. So know yeah. your matchups. If you do have a weak grip, well, you probably are gonna want a little bit of that turn down. Is it our preference? No, we always say preference, right? because yeah, there are great players that do both yes. there's for me grip is not necessarily a fundamental it's a preference and it can make the golf swing a lot easier so i'm just going to hit a couple henry let's do it and you're going to be able to slow these down and show that i'm able to deliver some lean into the in the shaft well i'm not going to hit any more that was perfect There you go. <laughs> you just clipped it off the top and it was nice and low. So that's a good tool that you can add to your arsenal, but be aware again of the grip and the matchups, how to align this so you can get the shaft lean without bashing your left arm. There's a lot yeah. of good training aids like that that actually sort of punish you if you do it the wrong way, but setting them up correctly is important too. Yep. So for that reason, we don't always use or recommend training aids 
A lot of the stuff we do is actually without them, but the ones we use, we want to make sure we, we use them right and safely. Exactly. So if you at home have a really strong grip, say like Matt Fitzpatrick or Brendan Steele, Paul Azinger back in the day, or you got a really weak grip like John Rahm, Colin Morikawa, who's a guy, maybe a legend that of old that might have had a weaker grip. Ben Hogan maybe a little bit with a yeah, left Yeah, Ben Hogan's pretty grip was neutral. pretty neutral. Yeah. We might get slapped in the face for that one. Yeah, I've, I've looked at his <laughs> grip a lot. It's neutral. <laughs> Two knuckles. Yeah. So whatever you guys might have, just know your matchups. We, we, our preference is a stronger left hand. That doesn't mean you have to play that way. You've coached plenty of players that have a more neutral, maybe yeah. even a little weak left hand. If you're already a good player, I don't usually touch your grip too much. Mm -hmm. But if you come to me and you're an 18 handicap and you've been playing for 20 years yep. and your grip's really weak, I might say, okay, this I could be part of your problem. I have seen a lot of really <laughs> good players, though, come out and see you, and a strong grip really helped them out. Yeah, so it just depends. It kept the face more stable for them and did a lot of cool things. So if you want more help with your game, though, and what you need to work on, be sure to come over to MiloLinesGolf.com. And join the site, get an initial analysis from Milo. That's part of the site. You get a webinar and all our access to our great website videos and the foundations, how to kind of add this method into your golf game. And make sure you guys like and subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next time.